facility in order to resume their stalled denuclearization talks. North Korea calls on its people to grow more crops as the country's food crisis worsens amid international sanctions. The South Korean won falls to a more than two-year low amid the country's poor economic performance and a stronger U.S. dollar. South Korea kicks off an extended holiday weekend starting tomorrow. The country's biggest airport says it expects a record number of travelers over the next three days. New Center begins now. to our viewers in Asia and hello to others watching from around the world. Welcome to Arirang News Center. Coming to you live from Seoul, I'm Han Daun. And I'm Doa Ram. Thank you as always for joining us this evening. South Korea's foreign minister has called on the United States and North Korea to show some flexibility in order to resume their stalled denuclearization talks. She also stressed that North Korea needs a comprehensive roadmap to reach a deal with the U.S. Arirang's Lee Ji-won at the foreign ministry with more. South Korea's Foreign Minister Kang kyung hwa said at an international press conference on Friday that to resume talks and reach a deal on denuclearization, both North Korea and the U.S. need to be flexible. I think Hanoi clearly demonstrated very different positions from the two sides. For the two sides to meet and have a productive discussions, obviously, that is going to require flexibility uh, to come to an agreement. Minister Kang added that to strike a deal on complete denuclearization, there has to be a comprehensive picture to start with, because without one, past denuclearization talks weren't so successful. She then said that because of the complexity of North Korea's nuclear program, that deal would have to be carried out step by step. Kang had also stressed the need for a comprehensive agreement in her briefing with local media just today before, saying the North needs to look at the matter more broadly. To a question about what flexibility the U.S. needs to show and whether that might be sanctions relief, Minister Kang said that these are not sanctions imposed by the U.S. but by the United Nations and that the North would have to assure them by taking concrete steps. When asked about growing concerns that there are differences between Seoul and Washington on North Korea, Minister Kang said it is natural to have a slightly different take on the situation, but that their fundamental stance remains the same. These are all very complex issues, and as you discuss elements of North Korea's nuclear program or what the United States can offer in exchange so that North Korea completely denuclearizes, uh, there are about to be, you know, uh, you know, d different discussions that lead in one direction or another. But I think the, uh, the fundamental position and the approach of the United States and us remains very much joined up and, and uh, headed towards the same direction. For now, she said their focus is on continuing dialogue with the North. And in an effort to do so, diplomacy is happening, Minister Kang said, but not yet on a scale significant enough to make public. Lee Ji-won, Arirang News. North Korea's food crisis appears to be worsening by the day amid toughest ever sanctions still imposed on the regime. The isolated kingdom is now publicly stressing its serious food shortage through local media, while UN food agencies are giving warnings that millions will suffer from lack of food. Our Oh Jung-hee has the very latest. The UN's food agencies are calling for humanitarian assistance for North Korea as over 10 million people, or about 40 percent of the population, are suffering from a food shortage. The United Nations World Food Program and Food and Agriculture Organization conducted an on-ground assessment in April. On Friday, they announced Pyongyang needs almost 1.4 million tons of food aid or else millions more will suffer. 
Due to heat waves, floods and landslides, the north produced less than 5 million tons of crops last year, the lowest in the past 10 years. Recently, the regime has shown that it's struggling to fight the food crisis on its own, with the state-run media continually highlighting the domestic food shortage and urging people to increase crop yield. On Friday, the North state-run newspaper Dudong Shinmun called on the people to find every piece of land that can grow grain. Earlier this week, the paper reported that rice is more precious than gold and urged farmers to lead the way in destroying sanctions. North Korea has requested support from international organizations. South Korea says it's monitoring Pyongyang's food situation, though there's no plan yet to provide food aid. Humanitarian aid should continue to improve North Korea's humanitarian situations. We share this view with the U.S. as well. While keeping an eye on the food circumstances in the North and the recent survey done by WFP and FAO. But there is speculation that Seoul could soon discuss the issue of providing food assistance to the North with Washington. U.S. Special Representative for North Korea Stephen Began is set to visit Seoul next week for a bilateral working group meeting. In a bid to restart stalled nuclear negotiations with North Korea, South Korea and the U.S. could consider offering humanitarian assistance, in particular food aid. However, it's unclear how the North would react. Oh Jung-hee, Arirang News. A Vietnamese woman accused of killing Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of Kim Jong-un in 2017, has been released. According to Malaysian media, Duan Thi Huong returned to Vietnam on Friday after being imprisoned in Malaysia for the past two years. Huong and her co-defendant Siti Aisha had been detained after they were accused of killing Kim Jong-nam by smearing a lethal nerve agent on his face as he entered a Malaysian airport. The two claimed they were tricked by four North Korean men into believing that they were taking part in a reality TV prank. Huang's release came a month after prosecutors downgraded her murder charges to causing injury and about two months since her co-defendant was released. President Moon has instructed the South Korean military command to continue working to build trust with the North by reducing tensions and implementing the two Korea's military agreement. This came on Friday as President Moon received a regular report from Chung, uh, Defense Minister Chung kyung do and other top military officials, the first such report since a recent reshuffle. They informed the president of plans to push ahead with the transfer of wartime operational control from the U.S. by maintaining strong ties with Washington. To this, President Moon said the transfer in close consultation with the U.S. needs to result in a stronger South Korean defense. Also today, President Moon Jae-in presented letters of credence to 23 newly appointed ambassadors in a ceremony at the Blue House. Some of them are former officials who worked with President Moon before, including South Korea's new ambassador to China, Chang Ha-sung, who served as chief policy advisor. The new ambassador to Japan, Nam Guan pyo was also the second deputy chief of the National Security Office. Among the newly appointed also included Im Sung Nam, who is now Seoul's ambassador to ASEAN. Im said he will do his best to create synergy among ASEAN member nations under the Moon administration's new southern policy and prepare for the South Korean ASEAN and South Korea Mekong summits scheduled for November. The Korean won continues to slip against the U.S. dollar, and today it fell to the lowest level since January 2017. With the U.S. economy going strong, the depreciation of Korean won could last for a while longer. Here's Arirang's senior economics correspondent, Kim Hesong. South Korea's won fell to a 27-month low amid a rally in the greenback. The won slid around 0.4 percent on Friday to close at 1,170 to the dollar. The local currency has continued to depreciate in recent months due to weakening economic data. Exports declined for five consecutive months and GDP growth in the first quarter contracted 0.3 percent, the biggest drop since the global financial crisis. Analysts say it wasn't just a weaker economy that pulled down the won, but a stronger dollar too. 
The U.S. Federal Reserve's comments played down the possibility of a rate cut in the near term. U.S. GDP growth remained strong at over 3 percent in the first quarter, sapping the appetite for risk and pushing the dollar up. Also playing a role was a weaker Australian dollar due to lower-than-expected building-approved data, a sign of slowing economic growth. In April, the Korean won fell 2.8 percent against the U.S. dollar, falling by the biggest margin among the G20 countries after Turkey. With the U.S. expected to post strong non-farm payroll data Friday local time, analysts say the dollar will strengthen at least in the short term, further weighing on the Korean won. Kim hye Arirang News. Oil prices continue to drop as increased U.S. stockpiles offset concerns over Washington's move to end waivers for countries including South Korea to import Iranian oil. Meanwhile, the Trump administration is reportedly considering even tougher sanctions against Tehran. Kim Dami has more. On Thursday, the West Texas Intermediate crude dropped nearly 3 percent to $61.81 a barrel. Apparently, importers had stockpiled oil ahead of the tougher sanctions, leading to fears of oversupply. U.S. inventories have risen sharply. With the prices at their lowest in a month, the head of OPEC has stressed that it's impossible to eliminate Iran from the international oil market. Speaking to reporters Thursday at the 24th Iran International Oil, Gas, Refining and Petrochemical Exhibition, OPEC chief Mohammad Sanusi Burkindu said the bloc should make collective, not unilateral decisions on supply. Turkey had also been temporarily exempted from the sanctions but says it cannot abandon Iranian oil so quickly. It does not seem possible for us to diversify the sources of the oil we import in a short time. The technology used in our refineries is not compatible with crude oil that is exported from many countries. Meanwhile, the Trump administration is considering an even more aggressive enforcement of its sanctions. The Wall Street Journal reported Thursday that the U.S. authorities will target the few remaining companies and financial institutions that do business with the Islamic Republic in Asia and the Middle East in an attempt to cut off lucrative sources of a U.S. dollar-denominated hard currency. With the new sanctions on banks and businesses, a trade including not only Iran's petrochemical sales, but also its sales of consumer goods, it said, would be chalked off. Kim Dami, Arirang News. South Korea's main airport is expecting a record number of passengers over the first week of May as people in the country take advantage of the public holiday. Our Choi si young reports. Incheon International Airport says it expects the average number of passengers a day during the first week of May will hit around 200,000, the highest in 18 years. The nation's largest airport made the assessment based on flight reservations. The crowds are said to be because of the public holidays. Wednesday was Labor Day, while Monday is a day off thanks to Children's Day. So many are said to be making the most of the holidays and heading abroad. Children's Day actually falls on Sunday, but thanks to local regulations, when a holiday falls on weekends, the next day becomes a day off. China also celebrates its labor holiday from May 1st to 4th. The Korea Tourism Organization projects that around 65,000 Chinese visitors will come to Korea during that time, an annual increase of more than 50 percent. Hotels in the country are backing up the forecast. They say the number of Chinese nationals who book rooms has jumped by as much as 20 percent compared to the same period last year. Choi Xiong, Arirang News. Korean Air, meanwhile, says it is raising domestic airfares due to what it says are worsening business conditions. South Korea's largest carrier says it will increase fares by an average of 7 percent starting in June. The firm emphasized the price hike will not apply to international routes which would need the government's approval. The decision comes amid more competition from low-cost carriers and the development of Korea's high-speed rail system. The total value of online shopping in Korea has hit an all-time high, mainly on increased sales of electronics and home appliances, as well as food and beverages. Our Son Young has the details. The total value of online shopping in South Korea edged up to a new record high in March, reflecting the growing trend of people choosing to buy online. According to data released by Statistics Korea for March, South Koreans bought goods were about 9.6 billion U.S. dollars. 
that is up 18.6 percent on year and renews the all-time record high previously set in December. It was mainly driven by the rising demand for electronics and home appliances. According to Statistics Korea, the 40.1 percent sales increase in such items mainly came from air purifiers as well as clothes dryers. The country's statistics agency attributed the rise to Korea's worsening fine of air pollution. Another contributor that drew online sales was the food and beverage sector, which jumped 89.8 percent compared to March last year. The demand was fueled by sales promotions and wider consumer choices of food delivery services. Online shopping proved especially popular on mobile phones. The value of mobile shopping stood at about $6.4 billion U.S. dollars in March, up 27.9 percent from the same period last year. The rise increased the proportion of mobile shopping from 58.4 percent to 63 percent of all online purchases. Sa Eun-kyung, Arirang News. K-pop sensation BTS made headlines once again this week by bagging two trophies at the Billboard Music Awards. And as the popularity of K-pop continues, so does its economic impact. Our Won Jung Hwan explains. The Korean wave, or Hallyu, refers to the global popularity of South Korea's culture overseas. And the economic impact of Korean pop music, TV shows, video games and movies continues to grow every year. According to the Korea Foundation for International Cultural Exchange on Thursday, exports of cultural contents surged more than 20 percent last year, contributing to overall growth. While the figure has been gradually increasing every year since 2014, last year's total Hallyu exports marked 9.4 billion U.S. dollars, up 9.1 percent from the previous year. Among the export categories, the gaming industry accounted for the largest portion of cultural contents exports at 3 billion U.S. dollars, followed by music and film and television. Meanwhile, exports of consumer goods and tourism were down 0.5 percent. The report also has its own Hallyu index to measure such cultural exports and the impact they have on the domestic economy. It conducted a survey on 7,500 people in 16 countries and used Korean cultural contents export reports from 16 domestic industries. The report also used the BTS fan club platform to analyze indirect contribution toward the economic growth. The annual report once again proves the ever-growing popularity of the Korean wave. Won Jong-hwan, Arirang News. The government's mobile payment system is expanding across the nation. Zero pay can now be used at convenience stores and soon will be available at expressway service areas. Our Cha sang mi explains the benefits for both the user and the affiliates. Dubbed Zero Pay, it's a payment system for smartphones. No need for cash or credit cards. Starting Thursday, the upgraded version is available to use at over 43,000 convenience stores across Korea, including GS25, 7-Eleven, and Emar24. ZeroPay immediately transfers money from the user's personal bank account to that of the seller. Paying has become even easier. You just need to pull up your QR code in the banking app that acts like a barcode. There's no longer a need to scan the store's QR code or even enter the price. The Zero Pay function also works on 21 different apps, 11 for individual banks, a comprehensive app with 19 partner banks, and eight easy payment apps like Payco and Neighbor Pay. Zero Pay is beneficial to both the consumer and the affiliates, so the convenience store's headquarters are also actively trying to expand the system to provide convenience on both ends. The goal of the system? Small businesses with less than 700,000 U.S. dollars worth of annual sales can benefit from a 0 percent commission. Professor Seo ji though, says that what is important is the incentives consumers get. Debit cards get you a 30 percent tax deduction and the government has promised to deduct 40 percent for the consumers. When compared to that, what credit cards offer is very low, but zero pay does have limitations when using it for other services. The government is laying out different incentives for the consumers as well. 
In fact, since ZeroPay started last December, the number of affiliates with the payment option has doubled every month, surpassing 200,000 as of April. The professor says compared to the end of 2018, when there were only around 250 payments a day, by April there were 5,100 per day. The government is looking to expand the service to 25 expressway rest areas starting this Sunday and to over 360 subway stations by June. Cha Sang-mi, Arirang News. The strongest tropical cyclone to make landfall in India in 20 years struck the country's eastern coast on Friday, leaving two dead. The India Meteorological Department said tropical cyclone Fani hit the state of Odisha at around 8 a.m. local time, with wind speeds reaching some 200 kilometers per hour. Around 1.2 million people have evacuated, and local news outlets are reporting heavy rain and cuts to power supplies in many parts of the state. The cyclone is likely to weaken as it moves toward West Bengal. With increasing life expectancy, people these days are likely to remain economically and socially active for years and even decades longer than before. So Korea's senior citizens are finding some creative ways to spend their golden years, some of them getting into modeling, while some starting their own channels on YouTube. Our Oh Soo Young has more on the so-called Grainaissance. Fine lines and graying hair may have been things to hide in the past, but a growing number of older Koreans are taking these features in their stride. So Young, at age 74, is one of Korea's up-and-coming silver stars who has been gracing the stage of Seoul Fashion Week since 2016. I was the only older woman among the models who were mostly 18 or 20 years old. I was doubting myself and shaking like a leaf. But then I thought, you only live once. Despite her soaring profile, she's still a work in progress, she says, as she practices walking with her peers at a modelling agency. They all come from different walks of life, but share the same desire to become the face of an ageing population. I asked myself what makes my heart beat faster and makes my life worthwhile and thought this is it. The moment came to me when I turned 60. A university in Seoul offers a specialised degree for aspiring models from the older generation, not only teaching them how to walk the walk, but also develop professional knowledge of media and the fashion industry. Along with Korea's rapidly ageing demographic, experts say the concept of beauty is also shifting. Fewer people are dyeing their grey hair and there are more fashion and beauty brands for seniors who want relatable models, not 20-year-olds. Other models have the advantage of life experience. Different emotions and expressions come to them naturally. The catwalk isn't the only way to silver stardom. 63-year-old Shin bang has gained nearly 300,000 followers on YouTube with her videos on making rustic Korean dishes. For nearly 40 years, Shim says she was only ever a housewife. Never did she dream that she'd share her recipes with thousands, all from her small kitchen in the idyllic Puya countryside. I live in the countryside and farm, so I work with seasonal ingredients, which I think my viewers appreciate. I'm proud and blessed to do something I love at this age. Numerous academies and community centres now offer vlogging courses for people aged over 50. Silver YouTubers impart diverse knowledge and life experience which appeals to all age groups. My 12-hour course teaches everything from setting up a channel to filming, editing, and even making thumbnails just by using a smartphone. Going grey used to be considered an inevitable but unfortunate part of ageing. But times are changing as people learn to embrace and celebrate turning silver. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. It's going to be a three-day weekend here in Korea as Children's Day falls on Sunday. A perfect time to witness the start of the 2019 Seoul Circus Festival. With a total of 25 teams taking part, the organizers hope to turn May into a month of circuses. Our Kan hyung gives us a sneak peek. A performer jumps off the top of a pole without any safety devices. In less than a second, he grabs the bottom just before his body hits the ground. This is just one of the incredible sights to be seen at this year's Seoul Circus Festival. 
This marks the second year for the capital city to host a festival, and it's been expanded from just two days to an entire month. This year, we decided to do circus for the entirety of May, so we have prepared circus cabaret for the first weekend, followed by circus season for the rest of the weekends in May. We wanted to run a circus world for the whole month. There are no admission fees for any of the performances at the circus festival. However, some performances do require registration, so sign up early as seats are limited. Visitors will also be able to have hands-on experiences such as juggling and tightrope walking. With Children's Day coming up this weekend, it's the perfect time to come out and enjoy South Korea's only circus festival at the Oil Tank Culture Park. Circus Cabaret runs through next Monday, during which four international teams and ten homegrown ones will put on shows for visitors. More information on the event can be found on the official website of the Seoul Foundation for Arts and Culture. Kan Young-woo, Arirang News. South Korea Prime Minister Lee Nak-yeon has asked the Speaker of Kuwait's legislature to consider South Korea for contracts in the country's economic projects. He is in Kuwait as part of an 11-day tour of the Middle East and South America. The Speaker said his National Assembly is working to make that happen, adding the majority of lawmakers support cooperation with South Korea. He also visited local oil refineries partially built by South Korean firms. Colombia is the next stop on East tour, followed by Ecuador. South Korea's trade ministry has been meeting with representatives from some 150 mid-sized local firms to help them expand overseas and improve their competitiveness. The government says it will pick seven of them with high growth potential that meet the government's industrial standards. The firms will be provided with support, including the establishment of smart factory systems and extra R&D funds. More than 80 firms in industries like electronics and cosmetics that have high export potential will be given marketing support of 60,000 US dollars each. South Korea and China have agreed to add nine new air routes between them, bringing the total number to 66. That'll mean up to 588 flights between the two countries every week. Seoul's transport ministry says they reached the agreement after two months of talks. Local carriers Korean Air and Asiana Airlines will be allowed to operate an additional four and three weekly flights, respectively, between Incheon and Beijing. Astronomers have released the largest picture of the universe by assembling 16 years' worth of images observed by the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble Legacy Field contains nearly 265,000 galaxies, which stretch back to some 500 million years after the Big Bang. The most comprehensive image of galaxies is the result of the collective work of 31 teams working with Hubble. That has been your three-minute news flash. Now it is that time to take a look at some of the digital content available on Adirang's various social media platforms. And today we have another episode of Onion News where our Yoon Jung Min takes a closer look at the top social and economic trends. Hi everyone, I'm Yoon Jung Min, a news reporter at Arirang TV and welcome to Onion News. The number of these pet them people in Korea reaches hundreds and thousands. You know this pet related industry is so popular that there is even a term pet economy which means pet economy. For example, you'll find Pet Me Up service which provides a special riding service for you and your pet because ordinary taxis and buses may refuse to give you a ride with your pet. What else do you know about the pet economy? Well please share what you know with some comments here.
you'll find bromance on movies or soap operas, but you know what? Bromance actually works for TV commercial ads. Nope. It all started with our actors Song Joong Gi and Park Bo Gum for a pizza advertisement. Well, not to mention Yoo Sung Ho and Cha Eun Woo for an ice cream ad. And more male celebrities began to appear together on TV screens. Recently, Song Min Ho of the boy band Winner and P.O. of Blocky, also known as Best Friends, unveiled a new TV ad, and fans are just much excited. They say like, love this friendship. They're like real brothers. Cute guy side by side. So why this bromance trend? Well, maybe because the more the better for female customers. More and more YouTubers are gaining popularity with various content, and some say, why not teachers? As more teachers begin to open their own YouTube channels to upload fun, exciting educational videos, the Education Ministry is going to set some guidelines for them. Under the current law, teachers are not allowed to have other jobs, so there has been some controversy over advertising revenues they earn on YouTube. But the Education Ministry is going to partially allow those revenues. Also, teachers will not be allowed to create inappropriate content for teenagers, like those containing F words or any sexual content. Despite such guidelines, there still will be some controversy on these teacher YouTubers. Well, that's all we have for today, but there will be more unnees next week. So don't forget to subscribe to A Plus and like this video. Bye. Some of the southern regions saw temperatures close to 30 degrees Celsius today. Very high for this time of year, and I hear it's going to be even hotter over the weekend. Now, let's get the latest weather forecast from our Michelle Park, who is at the Weather Center for us. Michelle. Hi guys, it definitely feels like summer now and as you mentioned, Uisang in Gyeongsangbuk-do province topped 29 degrees Celsius today. Now keep in mind that it's still chilly in the morning and night uh, with more than 10 degree difference for Seoul, so make sure you dress accordingly. And temperatures over the long weekend will remain higher than average. Unfortunately, we'll also see high levels of fine dust, especially in the northwest of the peninsula. Now Beijing will remain hot but a few notches lower than today while skies over in Tokyo will clear in the afternoon. Let's have a look at our readings for tomorrow. So it will be warmer than today, beginning at 12 degrees Celsius, while Jeju starts off in the mid-teens. And UV rays will be particularly strong across the nation tomorrow, so make sure to apply enough sunblock if you're heading outside. Now, the unseasonably hot weather is expected to last until Sunday, but by Monday, we can expect some relief from this heat. I'll leave you with the weather conditions around the world. Well, that will wrap it up for this edition of Arirang News. Thank you, as always, for watching. Stay tuned to Arirang for more analysis on current issues on news in-depth coming up next.